and we are back. Thank you for staying with us. We always appreciate your company. Um, now we move on to the first conversation of the day. And uh, we're talking about career development. And on career development, we have to talk about money issues, financial issues. And that's why um, today's topic is on financial literacy. How do you empower yourself financially? This is a topic that I know is affecting most of us. And uh, that's why we're joined with um, Abraham Masibo, who is a client relationship officer uh, and he works at Octagon, right? Correct. All right. Um, Karibu Sana, we are glad to have you with us. Thank you so much. All right. So mm. you want to tell us what, what you do, a little bit on what you do. Um, at Octagon Africa, I work as a client relations officer. And uh, basically just, uh, you know, touching on the areas of financial planning, financial literacy, and majorly on retirement planning. We'll all retire at some, some point, mm. whether in uh, uh, self-employment or uh, working as an employed person. At yeah. some point, you'll, you know, your body will, will become reluctant to wake up in the morning. So mm -hmm. what will happen then? So I basically, you know, train people in terms of financial, financial planning and now majorly on the area of retirement planning. Yes. And we'll get to the retirement planning because, you know, as youths, we do not think of the retirement plan yet. You know, we are still young, you know, that's, that's the perception mm -hmm. of most youths. But now you'll tell us about it. So before, before we get to that, when we talk about financial literacy, what do, we, what do we mean by that? What do we need to know about finances that we don't already know? <laughs> Uh, I think financial literacy is basically your behavior around money, with or without it. Mm -hmm. So how well do you conduct yourself with money? And uh, mm -hmm. you know, talking about financial literacy, there are five key components that if you're not cognizant or not really in understanding of it, then we, talk, we call you a financially illiterate person. Okay, what are those five? Um, so these areas? five areas you know, range from the aspect of budgeting. Then uh, we go to investing. How well do you invest your funds and where? Then uh, borrowing. But in borrowing, we talk about effective borrowing. Mm -hmm. Then uh, personal financial management. And now in the area of that you work, understanding how taxation works. If you don't understand these five areas, then we'd call you a financially illiterate person. Goodness. I, I don't know if I'm financially... Uh, I, know, I, know, I know most of the things there. <laughs> so I want to, ma to, to tell myself that I'm not financially illiterate, but the areas like taxation, maybe that's an area that I need to, um, to be keen on, mm -hmm. you know, in my, my, in my career now, like how, how differently am I taxed or how, how exactly am I taxed differently from others, from what you've said, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so tell us um, from budgeting, what does, how, how can a youth now budget and plan that that brings the aspect of planning yourself right mm -hmm. so how do you plan yourself in terms of budgeting and uh, the investing bit how do you invest is it after savings is it and how long do you need to save before you invest yeah okay uh so i i know most of us do the budgeting only when you've seen the money yeah which is the wrong way, <laughs> the wrong way of doing it yeah so budgeting should be done before actually the money is is is, is, is in full or is attained so that you are planning ahead for this money before it comes mm -hmm. to avoid getting into the what we call personal economic distress. Uh, so you, you, you're planning ahead knowing what financial roadblocks are ahead of you and that uh, in advance you know that this might happen and you're planning for it early in advance. So mm -hmm. the aspect of budgeting now comes in about when, when, when the money comes, how do you allocate it? How do you plan for it? You know, the, the, thumb, the thumb rule is that uh, it is 50, 30, 50, 30, 20 that you're using 50% uh, mm -hmm. of, your, of your income. Now we're talking about the net, not the gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think coming from, 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 from college, we all know that when someone earns 100,000, it comes full in your account as 100,000. You know, <laughs> until you get your first paycheck and there's some money there, you know, that has gone away. And you Pay as you earn tax. Yeah. Uh, so you budget with what's the net. And uh, then from that, you now get that 50% uh, should be used to, you know, sort your personal uh, area of, of finances, that's your rent, your food, mm -hmm. you know, the, the major things that, expenses that you need. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the 30% is what you're calling into the wants. Wants. Wants that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe in the next few years you, you like to own a car, you like to own a, 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 a house or something like that. Mm -hmm. You are thinking of something that you wish to, uh, to, uh, to own. So you're, you're 
channeling that money in a place whereby it will, you know, keep your head that you are able to get that to that point. Yeah. Then twenty percent you are putting now under under the investment mm -hmm. or saving, okay. so that uh, this one could be you know going into a savings plan to uh, be more like a cushion, you know, the emergency fund, mm -hmm. or you are pulling this money in a place that you know is investing to earn interest, you know, to just more like grow your financial. Uh, port mm -hmm. in terms of your, of your of the funds that you need. Okay. Yeah. So <coughs> when you talk about now, now the savings, the twenty percent, you have you know you have divided so well. Mm. So how do you how do you plan your savings again, the twenty percent, um, for you know for the cushioning in case of emergency? Like, do you need how much do you save for emergency fund? How much do you save for? Uh, an investment that you want to get into, or how much do you save for whatever else that you need to? Uh, saving, I'll say, it's, it's, it's a personal initiative. And you know, like in everything that we do, uh, you have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. That you know that uh, at some point you need some money to do something, something to grow your career, mm -hmm. maybe go for an extra course, you know, begin a business or do something else to just accelerate your financial uh, independence journey. So in terms of savings, you know, for the companies that uh, have been set up in a way that they have a personal pension scheme or a scheme for the employees, there's a percentage you are saving aside as a side of your money. So that, you know, increases the pot that you're saving towards your, your mm -hmm. either retirement or, you know, should you lose your job. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of savings, you are saving as an emergency fund in a way that, you know, we are all employed. And uh, if you're not employed, you're actually doing your own hustle somewhere. Uh, the economy gets bad sometimes. Yeah. You know, you can lose your job someday. At that point in time, how will you sustain yourself? Do you have enough rent, you know, for the next six months, if, you, if you're still renting? Do you have enough money to sustain in terms of your, your food and your personal needs for the period that you're looking around, looking for the next job, mm -hmm. or even as you're planning to do something else to just, you know, feed yourself at that time? So that's what we, what we tell the, the youth that uh, as you work, you should put aside some money that, you know, emergency. Should you have a sudden illness that requires a lot of money, mm -hmm. how do you go about it? Now you don't go back home and you know depleting everything that's supposed to be there, selling everything that's required just to sell at that, that point. You know, most of us uh, in our age, if you're young enough and you with no family, we allocate our money very well in terms of budgeting. But much of the money goes into what we is what we call you know the necessaries. <laughs> You know, the sherehe and everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, you, you, we've seen many people who've been, you know, in the limelight, very popular and very yeah. lively in terms of their, their, their working career. And then at the point when they lose their job or when something happens, you know, they come out seeking for assistance or help yeah. in terms of getting stable. Mm -hmm. But when they were working, these people had some good monies. We, we saw them live going, you know, to Mombasa, traveling to Dubai and all. Different countries. Then, yeah, yeah. We wonder then, what happened. Then now we ask what happened, you know. You were working some po at some time, you had some good monies in your pocket. Mm -hmm. But you were not planning ahead in terms of, you know, uh, the emergency fund or what should happen in case I lose mm -hmm. my job. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's, that, that's something. So we need to have that savings just in case, you know, just in case and to be to secure our future. Mm -hmm. And now, um, when we talk about investment, what do we invest to? What are the good investment uh, areas that we can get into, especially as youths? Um, in terms of investment, the, it, it's, wide, it's a wide topic. So uh -huh. dependingly, you can go in the conservative side when you're going, talking about the, you know, the government bonds, uh -huh. the treasury bills, very conservative. And you know, the government of Kenya has never defaulted in terms of you know, paying out the coupons from uh -huh. the uh, bonds. So you could go in that area. And as, as at the moment now, you can, you, know, you can open your own CDS account and uh, invest as a person, not necessarily going through a broker or anything. So what do you mean? Uh, for those that don't understand uh, treasury bonds and bills, tell us a little bit about it and even the CDS account that you've just mentioned. So in terms of uh, treasury bonds and treasury bills is that uh, for the sake of treasury bonds, there the, the, the is a cap amount, uh, I think, I think f uh, somewhere 50,000 shillings that you can invest you know, as a person, mm -hmm. take your money put in, and invest, then you can cut, get coupons either quarterly, you know, by annually or, or, or once, uh, once a year. Mm -hmm. So that helps you, you know, in terms of get, giving you some money in terms of growth. Yeah. Then you can either, either plow this money back, you know, or use it for other purposes in terms of, of investment. 
Treasury, treasury bonds are, are for longer periods, you know, one year and beyond, or five years, ten year, ten year, ten year periods. Then you can go into bills or treasury bills that, you know, are short, short, short term investments, whereby you invest for, for either three months, six months, mm -hmm. or, uh, or, uh, or, or let's say one year minimum, maximum. Then uh, in the same case, the money earns you an interest over the year and uh, that coupon or the amount that is paid back as interest. You know, your principal remains instant, mm -hmm. but then there's an amount that is given back to you as a return, you know, okay. for investing in the government. All right. Yeah. So, so that those are two areas or one, mm -hmm. <laughs> depending <laughs> on how much money you're willing to invest or yes, how, yes, how long you want your money to stay uh, away from you. So now, uh, what other opportunities? How's the money market like? The, yes, yes, correct. The market has opened up. You know, the money market aspect is uh, mm -hmm. currently, you know, the, one, of, one of the booming thing, business, places of investment in Kenya. Uh, very varied uh, mm -hmm. types of money markets. You know, there's the Saiton that you've heard of. There's the Kusa asset that just came in recently. Britam and even all these insurance companies and banks mm -hmm. are having their own money market funds. You can, you know, visit online and see on the Capital Markets Authority how that performance has been. Mm -hmm. The return is good, but you know, money markets uh, are flexible in a way that you can invest your money and, you know, you draw it at your convenience. Yeah. Uh, I'll say money markets are people who are disciplined. Unless you're putting the money into, into a fixed you know, deposit, a, a fixed account that you know, I'll do, take it out in one year or six months. Okay. Money market, you can put in your 100,000 shillings, and tomorrow you wake up, you need the money, and you can just log in and withdraw it. Uh, so so yeah. unless you have the financial discipline. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for money market, it's for financially disciplined people. Financially disciplined people, that when you know you put the money aside and you forget you about it, you won't, you won't touch it, it um. until you actually realize the return that mm -hmm. you're supposed to earn from that okay. investment. Okay. Yeah. So that's another option. What other option is there? Uh, the very old, old, old fashioned ones, you know, putting the money in the fixed bank, fixed deposit in the bank. You can, uh, you know, invest in circles, mm -hmm. depending now if, if you're investing to get a return. Then you can look for a circle that uh, gives a very good uh, dividends in terms of every year. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if you're investing or you're putting your money in a circle in for the sake of borrowing a loan, then you need to put your money in a place whereby you have you know, people who can guarantee you. you know, and as you talked about effective borrowing, that you're borrowing this money to take it to the, uh, an area that will actually earn you better returns or better interest. So that you're not taking the money you know, to just use it okay. for the sake of using, like we did with the help. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we are told there's some free money here. Yeah. We all logged in, we all looked for the money and borrowed, not knowing that you know, at some point we'll pay for it. <laughs> so if, if someone had talked to us about it earlier and told us that, you know, this money you are being given to you, uh, even as Babu, Babu you know, was you know, fighting for us and all, when we were running around the streets here, saying that, you know, help must come. But, you know, it's borrowed money and borrowed money must be, to be returned. Must, has to be returned. Okay. So if someone had talked to us at that time that, you know, this money is, uh, is a loan and that you'll need to give it back. Some of us took the money, you know, I know people who took the money and began a business and you know, it, it, it financed them up to that moment. And up to now, their life could be better. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the larger portion of us were going for the money to buy subwoofers, <laughs> uh, you know. Pockets, <laughs> money, pocket and, and, and the money usually used, used, used to come more so at this time, uh, you know, the Valentines. <laughs> And we are taking the money, you, you know. You take your girlfriend out on a street. Yeah. And, you know, that's how money, money uh -huh. that you have loaned. Mm. And now, um, I know that there's a good debt and a bad debt. And that's what you're talking about, really. Mm -hmm. um, taking money to make sure you invest it somewhere that will bring you returns. Not So how does a bad debt look like? Uh, so uh, the bad debt... That, you know, you're, you're borrowing money and you're taking it in a place that will not really earn your return. And when you're, I think when you're borrowing money, the whole point should be is where exactly are you taking the money to? Mm -hmm. You know, if you're borrowing money from a bank, you know, the, the rates are high and they keep varying every now and then, depending on the, you know, the market fluctuations. Mm -hmm. But if you're borrowing money from a circle, they're giving you the, a flat rate, interest rate. Mm -hmm. And the interest rate applies on reducing balance. So it depends with, you know, people work in the bank, but they borrow from circles. They don't borrow from, borrow from the same banks. I know of so, uh, of so many people who do that. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're taking a loan mm -hmm. to invest in business, you're taking a loan you know, to do something that will give you a return in terms of investment, then you're doing the right thing. But if you're taking money or a loan to go and uh, you know, buy flashy cars, buy things that will not actually you know, bring you right. a return or value to yourself, then yeah. you're doing the wrong thing at that time. And that's what we call bad debt. Mm -hmm. You'll struggle paying it when you actually don't feel the the need or the 
how it really helped you mm -hmm. when you took it. Okay. Yeah. So that's a bad debt. How do we get out of um, all this bad debt that people are in? I think something that's really also just affecting the youth is uh, being in debt. You know, mm. we've had, uh, an e you know, in the past we had an issue with the digital lenders with the high interest rates that they were charging. And they're easy, you know, they're easily accessible. So you borrow a loan, you get it instantly. They, mm. they give instant loan. Well, now repaying it is a problem. So you get some, a youth that has borrowed it from this uh, digital lender, and tomorrow they borrow from this other one. So you find someone has up to like uh, five different loans from different, you know, lenders. And now paying it is a problem. And that bring stress and uh, you know i think it's also part of one uh, part of the issue of affecting youth in terms of mental health causes rather mm -hmm. you know because of the financial difficulty that they, they get in when so in debt you don't know how to get out so how do they how do they get out from this debt that they get into i think that still takes us back to the very first aspect of budgeting mm -hmm. uh if you, wa if you wish to you know, clear your loans out, then you have to have a plan of how you wish to clear them out. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on where your source of income are, then you budget and know how much you'll go into in terms of, of loan, loan repayment. Mm -hmm. So the money that you are putting into the loan payment, you know, if you've taken a loan that is, is you are paying monthly, mm -hmm. then you can negotiate with the, the provider of the loan you know, to, give, to extend your period until that time when you have enough to you know, repay it quickly mm -hmm. so that you're able to finance it in a, in, in, in a slow and a steady way. Uh, I think, you know, wh when you get your first job and you have a pay slip, mm -hmm. banks open the doors very wide for you. <laughs> and everyone is very much willing to give you a loan <laughs> because they know that you have the capacity to repay. Mm -hmm. If you ask someone who is, who is, you know, who is retired and has a late of retirement, mm -hmm. they walk into a bank and they don't want to be listen to because mm -hmm. where, where do you get your finances to pay, to pay back your loan and you know that we, we, most of us don't just you know the youth in that case we don't take loans because we need them you know, we want to test and see if this thing really works <laughs> you are told that uh, you know there's a, an app that you just you know keep your key in your id key in your, your phone number and your money comes to your bank to your, to your own person mm -hmm. so you, you, are, you are trying because you want to see if this thing really works yeah, and actually the money comes and you're okay now you, you don't have the plan for the money you have no idea where, where, how, how you repay it. But since the money is here, you will find the next, next, next course of how to spend it. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, until that point when you, know, you are listed with CRB, then you realize, okay, what did I, what did I do to myself? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll say loans will always be there and loan facilities will always be there. Mm -hmm. you know, every man, microfinance institutions are opening every day to lend out people money. So the whole aspect comes back again to uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. Self-discipline that... Uh, in whatever you're doing, you know, you avoid the, the peer pressure that we, that we know about, that, you know, you've seen your, 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 a, a colleague you worked with has, you know, has, has already bought a house, you want to buy a house, they have yeah. a car, you want to buy a car, mm, you know, you, you just take your steps. And, you know, the, what we say that the only difference between you and that uh, senior executive you see in, the, in a corner office or that very much CEO or owner of a business that you see is just mm -hmm. time. You're planning, you're energetic, uh, you know, push against yourself that yeah. uh, you want to be in that place. And uh, the aspect of, you know, saving and investing is what will get you there. Time is just there, the determining factor. Okay. Yeah. All right, so it's just time. So what you're saying is those that are already in this kind of debts, they need to just plan, plan themselves out, you know, how to repay. In terms of repayment, um, do they start with, you know, what type of debt, how do they, how do they, you have five different loans that mm -hmm. you've taken from five different, mm -hmm. uh, you know, microfinance. So would you start with the most expensive, do you start with, with the highest loan you have, or do you start with the least, do you start with the one that is disturbing you the most, or, you know, there's also, you've also mentioned the aspect of just going to, to them and uh, seeking to, mm -hmm. for them to extend for you and even when they accept so which one do you start with in terms of repayment how do you start i think you know there are different analogies and uh, and ways of looking at it so depending uh, are you or first of all you look at your financial strength and, cap and cap capability mm -hmm. if you're able to repay the, the the larger loans you know faster that will be better but that that, that will be the harder part of it but if you're beginning the smaller ones and there's that feeling that you feel that you know i've already cleared one uh. so one to go two to go 
So the best, you know, I, I'll, I'll say depending on your financial capability, but mm -hmm. if you have the capacity to pay all of them at once, you know, begin with the smaller ones. Okay. So that as you finish the small ones, there's that feeling you feel that, you know, I've already completed one, so mm -hmm. one to go. One to go and, you know, in a, in a period of, let's say, two, three years, depending on how much the loan is, mm -hmm. you'll have cleared the loans out and now channel that money that you're paying the loans yeah. to investments. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair enough. So it de totally depends with the individual and, you know, how much they can pay at, at what time and, what, you know, their preference. Yes. So now, um, talking about the retirement plan, we were, we were saying that the youths are not... Mm. You know, their the perspective on retirement is not um, really what you're saying, that we need to have a, a plan now. Mm. We, we wait until we get to 40s and then we think, ah, now I need to have a retirement plan. So why do we need to start at, at our 20s? <laughs> uh, you know, this is very interesting. Just, just like a week ago, I was meeting with a, a lady who was retiring. She's around 61. She has just left employment and she was telling me that, you know, if I had known, you know, what this thing would do, would have done to me, I'll have begun when I got my first job. You know, when, when you get your first job, uh, most of us don't even have a plan of how we want to live. All you want to see is that we are live, moving out of that, that, that bed sitter <laughs> and moving into our, uh, in a Big good house, house or, in, or in, a, in a better estate. We, yeah. don't, we, we don't really think of, you know, what next. Uh, and, uh, you know, our friends who finished school and got their first job, and within six months, the job was gone again. It takes you way mm -hmm. back in distress that you cannot manage. Yeah. So when you get your first job, we say it's the first moment to think about your retirement. You know, you're employed. Oh, okay. You're employed. So when you get your first pay slip, mm -hmm. you know, if your employer is gracious enough and has a pension scheme, then you enjoy that benefit. You know, they take a percentage of your, of your, of your, of your, of your income, let's say 5%, and they match you the 5%. So you're saving a 10% per month as a retirement plan. Uh, but if that doesn't happen, then you have to find a way to, you know, look at it in a way that you have to open your own personal pension plan and okay. start saving. I say we, we all have some, and, and, and looking at this, we all have some, yeah. you know, 2,000 to 10,000 shillings that we don't account every month, mm -hmm. depending on how much you earn, correct? Yeah. Uh, you, you, however much you do your budget or uh, track your expenditures, you can not trace how 2K shillings was spent or 3K shillings. Yeah. But the difference that money can make in a period of 25, 35, 30 years is very huge. Okay. And uh, the, 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 I don't know if the eighth or the ninth wonder now because we already have the eighth wonder. The, ninth, the one of the world is that, you know, compounding interest. That the longer you invest your money, the longer or the more it earns interest and the more it grows. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who are young, have a longer period of investing. And we have the chance to enjoy that monopoly. If you okay. do a simulation of just 2,000 shillings, investing in a period of 30 years, yeah. that money could, could grow, you know, depending on the place that you invested. And now looking at this, you're looking at the interest rates that you earn, uh, where you're investing the money. If you're putting in a pension scheme that has good returns, then that money could, you know, if you do the simple interest and, uh, and, and compound it, it could be three or four times what you have actually saved. Yeah. Yeah. So the compounding interest is what we, as the youth, stand to gain. And if your employer has a pension scheme, then, you know, you can have your... You do over and, and, and above what they're giving because mm -hmm. that actually puts you ahead of everyone else. Okay. And uh, at the moment when you're retiring, or even if you start your own business, you know, retirement is about cash flow. You can have all mm -hmm. the wealth, you can have all the, the land that you need, but mm -hmm. if you don't have the cash flow, then that becomes a challenge. But if you have saved enough money for you to have, have cash flow, even if you have a business that's running and it gets to a point that's struggling when you're retired, then you have a mm -hmm. chance of getting some extra money to run, to run aside for yourself. And, uh, and, you know, don't really depend on your children. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's fair enough. Uh, you know, when you were talking, I was doing the calculation. Yeah, if you, if you have, uh, if you're saving 2,000, that's 2,000 that we usually lose track of, mm -hmm. uh, in, in 12 months, that's 24,000, right? Mm -hmm. So in, uh, in a year, uh, no, yeah, no, that's the year, 24,000 in... Let's say thirty years. Thirty years mm -hmm. you're working, you you almost have up to a million, almost. Almost a million. Yeah. Now so compounding interest in in that period, if you let's say you just assume the market interest is at ten percent, mm -hmm. that money could be s almost five seven times that amount. Okay. Yeah. So you can make good money from the money that we waste when you start saving early. Early, yeah. And that's and that's the thing. Okay. Mm. So. And and by the way, they say the best, you know. 
this is across the world. The best way of saving is at pace at 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 at, 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 at check off. Mm -hmm. You know, if if your amount and, and this comes to the COVID type, COVID periods. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us got their their salary slashed by a percentage. Yeah. So you are getting less fifty percent, but your life went on like like usual. Moved on. Mm -hmm. Moved on like usual. So if if at pace at paycheck you slash off some money and save it, and now talking about taxation, money invested in a pension scheme doesn't is not is not really uh, taxed at payroll level. Mm -hmm. So if you, you earn, let's say, 100,000 shillings and you are giving 10K to 10,000 shillings to a pension scheme, then the pay as you earn tax only applies on the 90,000 shillings that remains. Okay. So d depending, if, if you also have a, a life insurance cover mm -hmm. you know, of 10 years and beyond, then that also is not taxed at payroll level. So if the, all these things come in check-off level, you, you are actually save, saving, saving to have, a, have a, b a better financial future. At the same time, you are also saving on, on the taxes you are giving to the government. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. alright. Tell us about the NSSF Act. Uh, the NSSF Act, you know, uh, of 2013 is one of the game players that has come in. Mm -hmm. and, and we, be, we stand to be the, the, the biggest beneficiaries as the youth uh, of That's this NSSF so. Act. Mm -hmm. So it, when you are employed as an employee, your employer must remit 6% of your salary to NSSF. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, match the same amount that they are deducting you to 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 the NSSF. Mm -hmm. So if this money is invested, you know, earning interest every now and then until you get to retirement, it will be some huge amount of money compared to when our parents were just giving the 200 shillings with the yeah. employer matching 200. Mm -hmm. If you're earning 100k, for, for instance, 6% is just 6,000. Mm -hmm. Going back to the math again, if you read, 6% is 6,000 that your employer is deducting. Uh -huh. The employer must match with 6,000 6, to become 12,000 12, per month. If you save that money for the next 30 years, mm -hmm. You know, even with simple interest, that's a very huge amount of money. Okay. And, uh, you know, now the aspect of, you know, that the employer can decide to take this money out to a private pension scheme and invest to earn a better return in terms of contracting out, then uh, you will earn a better interest and your money will grow at a very high rate. Okay. And when you get retirement with a 10% or 8% average in the market, that money is, is quite huge. Wow. Uh, just recently, there, there was an article saying that, you know, Kenyan retirees are the poorest, mm -hmm. among the poorest in the world that they retire and they have no money to, to sustain themselves. So looking at it, if the NSF Act actually was, was to be continue being implemented for the next period up to, the, you know, when we get to retirement, mm -hmm. then Kenyan Trails will actually be the richest in this world. Okay. We will be flying out here and, you know, <laughs> just enjoying ourselves because it's we, to we have adequate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So okay. the Act has come in as a game changer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the government was looking at the aspect of social protection, mm -hmm. that as you retire, there's no circulis idea aspect of it. Uh -huh. You know, or, you know, you keep, you know, handouts. following up your parents, for your children for handouts, or those kind of things. Black tax. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, if you, yeah. please, if you do, do not want to have... To, to impose black tax on your children now start saving for your future. Right. <laughs> that should make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now how do you how do you track your um, expenses? What you know by what means if someone wants to be financially disciplined mm -hmm. to know how much they they waste, you know, this mm -hmm. two thousand we were talking about, how much they actually waste in a month from their salary and how much they can invest, they can save, you know. So how do you, what best ways can you track your expenses? Uh, I, I think we've all seen that clip that, that was going viral sometimes back, you know. Mm -hmm. Some guy had gotten his salary and he was, you know, allocating their monies. You know, 2,000 <laughs> shillings for the girlfriend, some 2K for the, uh, 1K for the, for the rent, for the rent mm -hmm. you know, some monies for, and they almost 90% is going to share. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, if that budget is done in the correct way, Mm -hmm. then you stick to your budget. That okay. you know, you know my, my rent will be 5,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. So you, you are, you're remaining the same, with the same rent, uh, even if your salary increases, that you remain the same rent and whatever is comes on, on board as extra, mm -hmm. you are taking it towards the savings plan. Okay. Then in terms of tracking your business, that when you have a credit of money that you, are, you, you need 10,000 shillings for, the, for, for food mm -hmm. throughout the year, throughout the month, mm -hmm. then try to stick to that budget. Mm -hmm. So that you don't actually go out, you know, getting into loans or spending money that was actually meant for, mm -hmm. for savings. And, uh, you know, the rule of thumb is that save before you start spending. Save? Save before you start spending. Okay. So when that money comes, whether it's at check, if it's, a, if it's going at check, at check off, even better. Mm -hmm. If it comes in your account and you are that disciplined enough, then take, if it's a 10%, take it out 
put it under savings before you start planning about the balance that has remained. Uh -huh. Then that will be so the best way to do If you, you know, you wait, you wait to spend until you have a balance to save, mm -hmm. it will never happen. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So save before you even start spending. Whatever yes. you get, take off that percentage, but it's in your savings uh, account or savings plan, or whichever you have. Correct. Now, now um, there's this question, automating, still re related to that, um, how can you automate your bill payments and why is that also just important? Um, automating your bill payments helps you, you know, to not waste money in that way and that uh, you are locating your monies to the channels that is supposed to go in. Mm -hmm. So that even as the money comes or even if there's an increment on your salary or in, or in terms of your, your income, if you are you're doing your own side hustles, mm -hmm. then you have adequate amount, amounts of money that's going into the right channels of money. I, I, I know the, the, the Safaricom, my, my Safaricom app, mm -hmm. I think I use that a lot in terms of automating my, my bills. And uh, you know, th there's a place for bill manager okay. that you can put in, you know, if it's your circle that you save, you can allocate the pay bill there in advance. Mm -hmm. Now that we, are, we, we use M-Pesa here in Kenya, yeah. so you can, even if you pay your rent by M-Pesa, you can, you know, have it as a bill there. Mm -hmm. If you have your water electricity, you can have it as a bill there. Mm -hmm. If you have your... Um, um, Depending, if you have a loan that you're repaying, you can also put it as a bill there. So that, you know, by, by just looking at it and having a, it written out, then you know how much you're mm -hmm. spending every month and how much is going in what aspect. Okay. So that, you know, your money doesn't get in your account and you're going out on a Friday. You know, your money comes in on a Friday and you're going out with your friends. <laughs> you will yeah, come home without friend, no food, <laughs> you know, money, money is, is gone. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, before you recover from that cycle, it will be a six months or seven months. Yeah. Uh, you know period yeah so yeah okay all right so um we need to be uh, intentional with how we spend our money with how we mm -hmm. manage our finances yes, you know, that's what we're saying here mm -hmm. so um we've talked about automating bill payments that's, that's very effective so now um how do you say uh financial stability therefore looks like for you to say I'm financially stable, how does it look like? Uh, I think I'll, I'll talk about now the difference between a rich person and a wealthy person. Please do. <laughs> so a rich person has very much in terms of material wealth, you know, and, 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 and the cash aspect of money, is money being dished out. Uh -huh. So if you, have a, if you have an uncle of yours who is 35 or 40, living in Kilimani, renting a, a house of 200,000 uh -huh. and earning a salary of, let's say, 400,000 in terms of net, mm -hmm then you'll, you'll see them as, as a rich, a rich person, yeah? Because they're living in an expensive place. Good they're, they're having a very good car. Uh -huh. They're taking their kids to a good school. But what will happen should they lose this job of theirs? They go back to zero. They go back to zero. And, you know, the children, the children are, are going in a, in a place they're learning French and German, they you know, in terms of school fees. <laughs> and you have no job. Now you have to take them back to a place whereby Oof. they have to go and, you know, learn Sheng, you know, <laughs> talk to Sheng to other, other, other children. So a wealthy yeah. person, a wealthy person looks at the streams of income, and looks at the long term. While the rich people are flashy, you know, and uh, you know, trying to show people that they, are, they they have the money, the wealthy person is silent, you know, and you know, working on the long term aspect yeah. that this money is generational. Mm -hmm. That uh, if anything were to happen to me, then my generation will go on, and my children go to school, you know, safely. There will be nothing that will stop when I'm not here. That's how a wealthy person thinks. Mm -hmm. They put their monies in places whereby they are sure that a return will come out of it. Mm -hmm. You are putting money in a place whereby it will bring you a return. Okay. So investing that money is what defines mm -hmm. you, and spending that money is what you know, we call you a rich person. Okay. You, ca you can be rich and wealthy at the same time. That you have the money, you, have the, you, you are dishing it out, you are even you know, having the cars, but you also have investments that bring you the Mon return. Okay. Uh, but most rich people are not wealthy. <laughs> okay, but m most wealthy people also are rich. Not really most. Very few wealthy people are rich. Okay. Because rich is in the outlook, what we see. Uh -huh. Wealthy is what they, ha they own that we don't see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's a difference between rich and wealthy. I hope you've taken that. And I love the aspect of generational wealth. You, you, you need to leave wealth for your children's children. Yeah. That's the point. Before we come to a close, talk to us about the taxes. How, well, why is it important to know how you're being taxed in the area of work you're in? So, depending, I think when you talk about tax in this, in this regime, we go, you get some, some, some shivers. <laughs> yes, oh. 
Yeah, so <laughs> uh, depending if you are if you are an employed person with a pay with a pay slip, there are taxes that apply. If you are a person in business, you also have taxes that apply in terms of you know taxations and the expenditures that you or the income that you make as mm -hmm. a, 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 a person who is uh, running a business. So if you're employed, then you know there are taxes that apply. I think we, we, we the, the major one or the bigger portion of the tax for those of us employed is the payee, pay the pay, pay, pay as you earn uh, tax. So then we, there's a housing levy that has come in. There's a, I don't know if NHIF is a tax, but yes, it is. Uh, you know, there, there are different taxes that apply. So if you know those taxes that and how they apply, then they affect your, mm -hmm. your gross pay. So for those who are actually, you know, just getting into employment or have got into employment, then you need to plan and know that when you, you, your salary is 100,000 shillings, you know, you be keen enough not to announce it to everyone. That, you know, <laughs> I earn 100,000 shillings because your account will not come with 100,000 shillings. Yes, please tell us. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if your colleague were to go home and say, you know, Abraham earns 100,000 100, shillings, everyone at home will be like, this person has 100,000 shillings, can you just give me 1,000 shillings yeah, when I ask of it? Very mean. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, the money that comes in your account is actually not that amount. Yeah. There's taxes that apply across it. And uh, if you know how, what's the net now, we say work with your net. Then that will be an easier way for you to, mm -hmm. to plan ahead and know that, you know, this is the amount that comes into my account. When s someone who is earning, let's say, 300,000 shillings, has a tax of almost 100,000 shillings that goes away as tax. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the, more, the more you earn, the more, you earn, the more taxes you the pay. The more taxes that apply. And even mm -hmm. the, this government just changed everything else. Mm -hmm. So if you plan with what comes in your account as net, mm -hmm. that's actually your income. Uh, in the same way someone who's, who's running a business, there's uh, taxes that apply in terms of the income that you earn as mm -hmm. a person, the corporate tax. I don't know if it's at 30% or 25% at, at, at now. But if you know what the tax is at that, that time, then you plan with what, mm -hmm. you know how to plan yourself in terms of taxes you should pay to just be compliant with the government mm -hmm. and uh, how much that comes into account in terms of planning for your own financial uh, uh, planning as an individual or even as a corporate. So knowing about the taxes is something that, you know, helps you to plan ahead and also helps you to find a way of even, you know, um, mm -hmm. I would say saintly or, 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 or in a good way evading the tax. Mm -hmm. If you, you know that if you serve an pension scheme, you'll, you, you'll earn a tax relief. If you have a, you have a, you have a, a, a long-term investment, or in insurance, let's say, let's say an education plan mm -hmm. or an endowment plan, then you also have enjoy a tax relief. So if you know how these things work and you incorporate them, then it can be easy for you to reduce on the taxes that you're paying to the government and increase on the savings that you're going to earn in the mm -hmm. long run. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I think that's clear enough. Uh, you just know where you, how you're being taxed and then now work with the net now. Mm. Don't work with... Come on, earn 200, don't go out shouting that you aren't 200 <laughs> <laughs> because the expectation is high but what you get is something else mm. but that's you know just being um cognizant of everything now as we come to a close what do you want people to take home from this conversation to be f uh, on being financially literate on or being good planners um i think the take home is that you learn to budget before you spend mm -hmm. and uh actually budget before the money comes so that when it comes it actually goes in the in the in the allocations as you have allocated it mm -hmm. then uh plan out your financial journey and as they say that the best way in terms of planning is have it as a region we all hear this question in interviews that they ask you know where do you see yourself in the next five years yeah if you are saying it out and it's not actually written somewhere mm -hmm. then it's just it's just just a dream okay so budget and have it written out uh, clearly, so that you know that when my money comes, this is how I allocate it in terms of, of investment, in mm -hmm. terms of my, 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 my expenses, in terms of my wants, even the things that I want to uh, you know, earn in the, in, in, in the long run. Mm -hmm. Then, depending on how much you earn, you'll actually have a plan that you know, works. Okay. The, the, what they call the smart plan. Mm -hmm. you know, it's specific, it's mm -hmm. measurable, it's articulate, realistic, and, and time bound. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I think those are great points to, to leave. Thank you very much Thank uh, you. for coming on board and sharing this amazing insights on financial literacy. We definitely hope, we, we believe that it will help us in this journey now that it's still early on in the year, you know, mm. we need such tips. 
So this has been Abraham Masibo, who's a client relation uh, officer at uh, Octagon Africa. And we appreciate that he came on board. Thank you for staying on for this conversation. I hope you've taken something from it. Now we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back to talk about what is happening in Kenya, state of the nation, politics, uh, discussions that are affecting the youth. So uh, stick with us.